<laughs> all right, all right, Neil Rotnar, Hot Doc here with a story. This past week, we celebrated Dave Mason's 76th birthday. Now, Dave is best known as a founding member of the band Traffic, but he's played and recorded with a multitude of notable talent, including Paul McCartney and George Harrison, The Stones, Hendrix, Clapton, Steve Winwood, Delaney and Bonnie, Leon Russell, the list goes on and on. So today, I thought I'd tell you a few things about Dave Mason that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. Dave took up the guitar at 16 years old, and by his late teens, he was playing in bands and getting to be pretty well known. Now, he met drummer Jim Capaldi, who introduced him to his friends, Chris Wood and Steve Winwood, and Capaldi, Wood, Winwood, and Mason would jam together at a club called the Elbow Room in Birmingham, England. Winwood, of course, was in the Spencer Davis group, and when he left in the spring of 67, the four that I just mentioned formed Traffic. But Dave Mason's tenure with Traffic was very disjointed. He co-founded the group, but left following the release of their debut album, Mr. Fantasy, in 67. He was 19 years old and he couldn't cope, and so he just quit. <laughs> All right. But he returned briefly but again, by the time the band's second album, simply titled Traffic, was in stores, Dave was already gone again and on his way to America. And according to Dave, the personalities came in after the second album. That wasn't me. That was the others. I have a very pop sensibility. And in the beginning, the songs that I was writing became the singles for the band. And that was a rub for the other three. They didn't want it. That's why I upped and moved to California. But while still in London, Dave had become friends with Jimi Hendrix. As a matter of fact, Mason was with Hendrix at a friend's apartment when they both first heard Dylan's version of All Along the Watchtower. Jimi, as we all know, loved the tune and decided to cover it. And Mason, of course, was at the studio the day that Hendrix was recording the tune. And so Dave picked up a 12 string while Jimi shouted the chords to him. In the meantime, Noel Redding had had it. He got disgusted and left. So Dave took over the bass as well. Although in the recording, Jimmy actually played the final bass part. Okay, so that's a whole session. I've talked about that session with Hendrix. Uh, it was a party, chaotic, but uh, Dave Mason was one of the people that was there. All right, so now once in California, Dave became the lead guitarist for Delaney and Bonnie. And on their first tour, they opened for Dave's old bandmates, Blind Faith, with Steve Winwood and Eric Clapton. <laughs> now, when Clapton, during sessions for Harrison's All Things Must Pass, stole the group's rhythm section for Derek and the Dominoes, he initially pulled Mason in as well. And Dave was slated to be the second guitarist for Derek and the Dominoes, and he actually played on their early studio sessions, including the Spectre production of Tell the Truth, which was later pulled out, withdrawn from the, uh, from the uh, album, and it's now a collector's item. He also played at, the first, at their first gig of Derek and the Dominoes, uh, at the London Lyceum, and again, he left the group soon after that. All right, since all of that, Davis had a stellar career. He's played with all kinds of people. Still out there doing it. A couple of years ago, I saw him uh, at Levon's place. I had never seen him play before, and he was like, great. I mean, I, I loved him. He was terrific. I'm going to end with a funny story about Dave and my old friend, Michael Jackson. You wouldn't think of these two together at all, but they actually recorded together. Now, according to Dave, I was cutting Old Crest, the last album I made for Columbia at Westlake in L.A. Michael was in the other room doing Thriller. I needed somebody to sing a high part on a song I was recording called Save Me. Somebody told me they were on a break, so I just walked over there to the doorway of the control room and I explained what I was doing. <laughs> Michael looked at me for a minute and he said, I was 12 years old and I did this Diana Ross session 
And the last thing she and I did together was a song called Feeling All Right. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. I'll come over and sing with you. <laughs> so yeah, Michael Jackson and Dave Mason. All right. Excuse the, uh, the, the Michael Jackson voice. I had to do it. If any of you uh, ever listened to uh, my book on Audible, uh, Rock Doc, I actually read the book and I do a Michael voice for better or for worse. All right. That's my story for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll have more stories as the days go on. And as I like to tell you, always remember to keep on rocking. All right. Bye for now.